Hello again, and welcome to Chapter 12 of the Let's Play of In Memoriam or Missing Since January. We left off at the start of the Ignis section, and we are in a puzzle called Fatidi. And I left this clue, which I felt was a fairly easy one, the standards um, the game has set so far, um, which just had the text Benatki 1599. Which, sure enough, Alicia came through again on the forums, very quickly coming up with this website. Uh, for Benatki Castle, which you can find four numbers written on the side of it uh, that says 1864. So if I just type in 1864 here, that solves the puzzle. So thanks for that, Alicia. So the phoenix is uh, watching the romance play out with Jack and Karen, biding his time at this point. So we have a few more puzzles. I don't think we're going to get through many of them today, but we'll uh, get at least through Subos here, where, as creepy as this sounds, I'm going to light this doll on fire. It's really disturbing. Which forms a skeleton, and the matchbook now has a skeleton image on it. So what I have to do is just kind of pose it to match the matchbook and it makes that sort of click sound when I'm in the right position. Just gotta move the joints here. I'm not even sure what this has to do with anything. It just seems like one of those things that, you know, the designer of the great work, the Phoenix, thought, hmm, that's creepy. Let's do this. So that's the first half. And this is the second half, which is another uh, skill game. Where, as he explains there, I have to kill the parasites before they eat the plants. You see them all swimming around here. Basically, when the little flame from my reticle there crosses over them, it kicks them out. And uh, with a lot of skill puzzles, I tend to fast forward through it for time reasons, but I think I'm going to let this one play out today. Because uh, I think it's important that at least once or twice in this Let's Play that I show um, the true length of these things. And this one's not so bad as they go. And basically, to control it, what I'm doing is I'm holding down the left mouse button and just swinging the cursor around, and that movement is reflected. So there's three levels to that. That was the first one. This is the second one, which is, of course, harder. But the idea is the same. And generally, the strategy I've found that tends to work is to just... Um, sort of pick out one or two plants to be the primary ones you protect. Because if, you, if you're going all around trying to save all of them at once, you end up losing all of them. Because you spend more time going back and forth between them than actually saving anything. So this method seems to work. 
It's not looking good for this run through, though. Might have to redo this level. Which, again, is normally one of those things I'd edit out, but for this uh, chapter, I'm just going to let this play through. Oh! I actually took it out with my flame on my own there. So the Phoenix taunted me a little bit. And here I'm kind of breaking with my established strategy a little bit here, just to go after these really big clusters. Try to narrow down the numbers a little bit. So to review a bit while I'm playing this, uh, last chapter was the big news. That uh, the Phoenix thinks he's the reincarnation of Giordano Bruno, a uh, intellectual and alchemist magician, I guess, from uh, the 1500s. He was burned at stake. And that's level 2, so now we're on to level 3. But the Phoenix named himself that because he thinks he's rising from the ashes. And appears to be hunting down members of a Christian cult named Manus Domini as revenge. What we don't know is what set him off. Why he's choosing the people he's choosing. I, I mean, they're in the cult. And I'm guessing that the location of the murders matches the places that uh, Bruno lived as well. So this begs the question, uh, how's the Volker case tying with this? Were, was the book by Bruno? Was, was uh, Manus Domini responsible for Volker's killing? Some uh, food for thought there. Ooh, I'm down to one. I think I can do this, though. I think this is doable. Oh! Or not. Alright, level three. One more time. So I'm interested in hearing your theories on how this is all playing out. What we do know right now is that Jack and Karen had gone to Prague. The Phoenix apparently followed them. And that he's done several killings while in Prague. Multiple. Not sure how many yet. Or what the body count is at this point. But we can get some clarity on that soon. But we do know he's targeting up to 12 victims. This also begs the question of how the great work here that we're playing figures into all this. What are we going to find at the end of it? What happens if we reach it before he kills 12 people? I guess there's only a way to find that one out, though. Alright, almost got this. Down to one. Come on. Ugh, man. Just keeps slipping out of my grip here. This is starting to become like one of those uh, Looney Tunes gags, or like the Scooby Doo episodes where they're doing a chase scene and they're running through different doors and wearing like different costumes and different order of people as they move between them. This guy just doesn't want to go. There we go. Got him. Now why isn't it solved? Aw, oh, shit. He's back! Back from the grave! Come on. There we go. Finally! This is solved. That evening, there was to be a new development in our investigation. Just as Karen, still numb from the cold, fell asleep at my side. Whilst leafing through a book, I came across the place where had lived. I decided to go there straight away, leaving Karen to sleep.
the signs drawn on the wall in blood hadn't been left there by coincidence. I alerted the police, dreading to get news that a new body had been discovered. That clip provides us with a little more clarity. It sounds like uh, we're up to victim number nine at this point. And Jack's just catching up to the puzzle we did a little earlier. So now some animations featuring the clip we just saw. And we're in uh, Tukmos. So this first part of the puzzle, what I have to do is light up the gas, light up all the lights, and keep it lit until that little um, bar of boxes up there fills up totally orange. And there are two things I have to do to maintain the flames. The first one is uh, individual little ones will go out and I have to light those with the match. The other is I have to keep resetting the gas dial on the left, otherwise they'll start going out in batches starting on the right and working back to the left. So it's sort of a juggling two things at once job, keeping all these flames lit. But we're over halfway there now. Getting there. Sometimes it can be hard to find where exactly the flame drops because it doesn't com completely go out. Just hear the sound effect and gotta go hunting. Oh, there we go. Alright, that solves this part. And we're on to this now. So this is a pretty clear cut. It's an investigative puzzle. And the Phoenix is looking for an address, and it helpfully provides numbers and street names for Prague. And, but uh, with this little quick time VR thing here, but you can see I can't really read any of the signage. It's too low res for me to le read the signage on the building. So really all we have to go with at first glance is just the street photo, which, you know, in the gauge of Google Street View, it's a little easier. Uh, there's this wall back here, parking lot over there. But there is one clue hidden in this. So if I zoom in, we can see there was text embedded in this wall over here. That looks like it says Knudstorp, K-N-U-D-S-T-O-R-P, 1546. So there's our clue. And I'll leave this one to you guys. It should be pretty straightforward, much like that last one. We've got no new emails for this chapter, so that's all the help we're getting, is this clue. So I need a full street address, number, street that goes with that house good luck and good hunting everyone thanks for watching thanks for playing along and i'll see you next time in chapter 13.